Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2 Design. In this video, I will explain you what is a normal map and how it works so that you can manipulate them, preventing bugs with ease and understanding. Let's get started. Normal maps can modify the behavior of the light pouncing on a mesh. It can fake high frequency detail and allow us to transfer sculpted or photogrammetry captured informations onto low poly character or even a simple plane. To better understand what a normal map does, let's have a look to what is a normal. The normal of a surface is a vector perpendicular to this surface. In Blender, we can display those normals by going to the overlay menu and click normals. Each face of a mesh will have its own normal. So the normal of a face defines the face orientation. Thus, it also defines the way the light will bounce on the surface. This is why here, for each face that has a different normal orientation, we get a different shading. When we right-click on an object and switch to smooth shading, our software just blends the shading between the different faces. Basically, it outputs a gradient between the colors of the different faces. Most of the time, when you get shading issues, it's because your normals are inverted. We can consider that a surface has an inside and an outside and that it's defined by the orientation of the normals. We can display the normal orientation through the overlay using face orientation. Outside faces are in blue, inside faces in red. So here you can see I have a discontinuity in my surface orientation. This is why our shading looks buggy. We can recalculate the normals by selecting all the faces and pressing Shift N. I will now explain you how normal maps work and why they have this strange color. By default, this plane looks perfectly flat, but the normal map will modify the surface normal exactly as if we were modeling the cobblestone on the surface. And so, faking shadows and reflection that make us believe that we currently have some geometry on this plane. One super important thing that is often misunderstood is the color displayed by Blender when we try to preview normals. Whenever you are using a geometry node, whether it's position, normals, or whatever, each color refers to an axis. And guess what? Those colors are the same used by the gizmo and widget for the object orientation. Here, when a face is pointing to the top toward the Z axis, it becomes blue. When a face is pointing to the right, it becomes red, exactly as the x-axis. And when a face is pointing toward the z-direction and x-direction, it becomes pink. Because this is the color you get whenever you are mixing blue and red in RGB. So each axis uses a color to display its orientation. And so each color output on the surface of our object shows us the normal of this surface. What is often confusing is this black color. You should know that a color that has a value of 0 or below will be black, and a color that has a value of 1 or above will be white. So when a face normal is pointing down, for example, it's pointing in the negative direction of the z-axis. So in this example, the z and x value of this face normal would be minus 1 and minus 1. So the RGB value will be minus 1, minus 1, and 0. But your screen can't display a negative value. It will be able to display a value from 0 to 1. Any value above or below will turn completely black or pure white. But Blender does output values beyond those thresholds. And a good way to understand this is to use the position node. What I will do since I'm using EV is that I will enable the blue. You can see that the top of my sphere is blue because the position of the top of the sphere is at 1 in our 3D space. As I move the sphere up, you can see that it turns into a more intense blue color and it's triggering the bloom and start to shine. This is because the colors that is outputted use the position value of the sphere. And since the Z value is beyond 1, our object turns into an emissive blue object. 
And if I push the object in the positive value for X and Y, you can see that it turns to an intense white because Blender is using those location value and output a color. And this color has a value that is superior to one, so it triggered the bloom. So hopefully now you may understand that those color can translate a position or an orientation and that their value can be negative or way beyond one. Our goal using normal map is to make Blender believe that a flat surface can point in any direction, whether it's positive or negative. And we will do this using a normal map. But I explained you before that by default, we can't make a picture with a value beyond zero and one. Here on the left, you can see our sphere on a plane and on the right, the normal map that will be generated from this. To be able to use this normal map, we need to plug it in a normal map node. You may already know that whenever you are using a normal map, you need to switch its color space to linear or non-color data. And I will explain you why in a few seconds. But for the time being, as I convert my normal map through a normal map node, you can see that I get almost the same result between my true geometry and the normals generated by this normal map. So basically, the normal map node takes the color information from our texture and convert it into vectors. It tells the vector to point in the positive or negative direction on the x-axis, but also on the y-axis. And to be able to store those information into a picture that has a value that goes from 0 to 1, and these values are remapped as follows. Values from 0.5 into our normal map textures cover vectors that goes from minus 1 to 0. And colors that go from 0.5 to 1 covers vectors that goes from 0 to positive 1. And this explains this singular purple color. Most of the time, the Z value of a normal map is 1. So the blue value is 1. And then if you want a neutral vector for X and Y, you need a value for those vectors of 0. So a color value of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And you get this purple color. So basically, when you are using this color, you are not modifying the normal of your surface. And all those color nuances tells the normal to point whether toward the positive or negative value of the X and Y axis. And so it influences the bouncing of the light. As explained before, in most tutorials, we told you to set the normal map to non-color data. You can use linear too. But you do need to switch because by default, Blender imports image textures as sRGB and it doesn't look good at all. And the reason is pretty simple. We have seen that Blender and other softwares use the color values of the normal map to generate vector information. So the value reads need to be accurate. But when a picture or an image is set to sRGB, it is gamma corrected. Here you can see my normal map set to sRGB. If I switch to linear and I add a gamma correction node and set its value to 2.2, it's the default value used by sRGB, my normal map color will look exactly the same as the sRGB normal map. So it means that if you are using a texture in the sRGB color space, its color range is modified by the software. It's currently darkened because we humans tend to better see nuances in the darkened tone. And if we switch color space from sRGB to linear, color seems to be washed. This is why you may always use non-color or linear for normal maps and roughness map, because we want the accurate values of those textures to drive our materials, while sRGB is generally fine for your diffuse color. Another common issue is to have the green channel of our normal map flipped or inverted. It's generally harder to spot, but seams will appear on your character and the overall detail will look off. A good way to spot this is to directly preview the normal map nodes or to use a dark material on your character with a very low roughness. This doesn't mean that your normal map is not good, 
it means that it may be using DirectX or OpenGL and may have been generated using DirectX or OpenGL. You can invert the green channel in Photoshop, for example, or in Blender, you can add a separate RGB, invert the green, and then recombine the colors together. This is the way I prefer to do it so that I can trigger the invert node whenever I need it. One last thing you may want to know is that it's better to use a 16-bit normal map because you will have way more nuances than an 8-bit map that has only 256 color per channel. So basically 256 different vector per channel. While with 16-bit, it goes beyond 65,000 per channel. For previous generation games and mobile games, it's better to stick to 8-bit for the time being. This is the end of this video. I hope it helps you having a better grasp on normal maps and I will see you in the next one.